seven types of people. You shouldn't help. Don't let your kindness be taken advantage of. Don't let your kindness be taken advantage of. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you something. How many of you have given your time, your energy, your kindness to someone only to be left feeling drained, unappreciated, or even used? You see, kindness is one of the greatest gifts we can give to the world. It's a reflection of our humanity, our strength, our compassion. But let me tell you this, it's also one of the easiest things to exploit. Not everyone deserves your help. I know that sounds harsh, but it's the truth. Some people will take your kindness and turn it into a tool to control you, to drain you, to use you. And if you don't learn to protect your energy, you'll find yourself giving to the wrong people while the right ones go unnoticed. Today, I'm going to show you seven types of people you should never help. Not because kindness is a weakness, but because protecting your peace is your greatest strength. By the end of this, you'll walk away knowing exactly who deserves your time and energy and who doesn't. So are you ready to reclaim your power? Let's go. But one, the perpetual victim. They don't want help, they want attention. Let's talk about the first type of person you should never help, the perpetual victim. You know who I'm talking about. This is the person who's always in crisis, always. Every week there's a new disaster, a new struggle, a new sob story. And at first, you feel for them. You step in, you help, because that's what kind people do. But here's the thing, they don't actually want your help. They want your attention. <laughs> you see, the perpetual victim isn't interested in changing their circumstances. They're not looking for solutions. No, they thrive on sympathy. That's their fuel. They want you to feel sorry for them because it keeps them at the center of the story. Have you ever noticed that no matter how much advice you give them, they never act on it? You could hand them the blueprint for success, the step-by-step -step guide to get out of their mess. And what do they do? Nothing. Because taking responsibility isn't part of their script. Let me paint you a picture. Imagine someone stuck in quicksand. You throw them a rope, but instead of grabbing it and climbing out, they pull you in with them. That's what the perpetual victim does. They don't climb, they drag. They'll tell you, like, nothing ever works for me. They'll say, like, you just don't understand how hard my life is. And before you know it, you're not just their helper, you're their emotional dumping ground. Your peace, your energy, your time, it's gone. Here's the hard truth. When you help someone who refuses to take responsibility, you're not actually helping them. You're enabling them. Let me say that again. You are enabling them. Every time you rescue them, you reinforce their belief that they're powerless, that someone else has to fix their problems. And that belief, it keeps them stuck. Now I know what you're thinking. But Denzel, I can't just walk away. What if they really need me? And to that I say, there's a difference between helping someone who's trying to rise and someone who's comfortable in the pit. You need to ask yourself, are they willing to put in the work? Are they ready to take responsibility for their actions? If the answer is no, then stepping back isn't cruel, it's necessary. Let me leave you with this. Your kindness is a gift, not a lifeline. Save it for the people who are ready to rise. Save it for the people who want more for themselves and are willing to do the work. Because when you waste your energy on the perpetual victim, you're not just sacrificing your peace. You're robbing someone else of the help they truly deserve. Step back protect your peace, and let them find their own strength. Number two, the chronic complainer. They'll drain your energy, not solve problems. Now let's talk about the second type of person you shouldn't help, the chronic complainer. We all know this person. They don't just see the glass as half empty. They think the water tastes bad too. 
had it. This is the person who has a problem for every solution. You could offer them the best advice in the world, hand them every tool they need to succeed. And what will they do? Complain about it. It's too hard. It'll never work. You don't understand what I'm going through. No matter what you do, it's never enough. You could move mountains for these people and they'd complain about the view. The toxic power of negativity. Let me tell you something about negativity. It's contagious. Spend enough time around a chronic complainer and you'll start doubting yourself. You'll start questioning your own worth, your own choices. Why? Because their negativity seeps into your mind like a virus. They thrive in a world where nothing is ever good enough. And the more time you spend trying to fix their problems, the more you get pulled into that world. Before you know it, you're not just listening to their complaints, you're carrying their burdens. Have you ever felt emotionally exhausted after talking to someone? That's the chronic complainer effect. They don't want solutions, they want a platform. Here's the thing about chronic complainers. They don't want to fix the problem. They just want an audience. When you try to offer solutions, they'll find new things to complain about. When you try to inspire them, they'll tell you why it won't work. Their goal isn't improvement, it's attention. They want to vent, to unload their dissatisfaction, and they'll gladly use you as their sounding board. Now let me ask you this. When you spend hours listening to someone's complaints, what are you really accomplishing? Are you helping them? Or are you just giving them a stage to perform their negativity? Helping someone should lead to growth, to change, to progress. But with a chronic complainer, your efforts are wasted. You're pouring water into a bucket with a hole in it. No matter how much you give, it will never be enough. So what do you do? How do you handle someone who's always dissatisfied, always negative? You set boundaries. You stop trying to fix problems they don't want fixed. Instead, you redirect your energy toward people who are ready to make positive changes. And when they try to drag you back into their world of complaints, remind yourself, their dissatisfaction is not your responsibility. Let me tell you something. Your energy is sacred. Don't waste it on people who drain it. Surround yourself with those who inspire you, who uplift you, who see the possibilities instead of the problems. Because here's the truth. The chronic complainer doesn't need your advice. They need to take responsibility for their own mindset. And until they do, no amount of help will ever make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with this. Stop trying to be the hero in someone else's story if they're not willing to turn the page. Your time, your energy, your peace of mind, they're too valuable to waste. Let the chronic complainer carry their own negativity. And while they're busy complaining, you'll be out there building, growing, and thriving. Protect your peace, protect your energy, and keep moving forward. The three, the entitled person. They demand, but never appreciate. Now let's talk about the third type of person you should never help, the entitled person. This is the one who doesn't ask for your help. They demand it. And when you give it, they don't thank you. They act like it was owed to them. You've seen this type before. They walk into your life with an attitude that screams, the world owes me something. They don't see your kindness as a gift. They see it as an obligation. And let me tell you something. You don't owe anyone your time, your energy, or your resources, especially not someone who takes you for granted. The danger of entitlement. Here's the problem with helping an entitled person. The more you give, the more they expect. You could drop everything to solve their problems, and instead of gratitude, you'll get complaints. 
They'll say, like, that's all you did? What about this? They'll say, well, why didn't you do it sooner? Entitled, people are never satisfied because their mindset is built on taking, not giving. And if you're not careful, they'll drain you dry. Your energy, your resources, your peace of mind. No gratitude, no growth. You see, gratitude is the foundation of growth. When someone truly appreciates your help, they use it as fuel to rise. But the entitled person, they don't grow because they don't see the value in what you've done for them. And here's the hard truth. You can't teach gratitude to someone who refuses to learn it. So what do you do? How do you handle someone who believes your kindness is their right? You set boundaries. You say no when you need to. And you walk away when their demands outweigh their appreciation. Let me tell you this. Saying no isn't selfish. It's self-respect. By protecting your energy, you're not just saving yourself. You're creating space for people who value your kindness, people who will use your help to grow instead of taking it for granted. Your kindness is not a debt. Ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with this. Your kindness is not a debt you owe. It's a choice you make. Don't let anyone make you feel obligated to give more than you're willing. Choose wisely who you help. And remember, you deserve relationships built on mutual respect, not entitlement. Protect your peace, set your boundaries, and never let an entitled person make you question your worth. Number four, the habitual liar, twisting truth, draining trust. Now let's move on to the fourth type of person you shouldn't help, the habitual liar. These people are masters of deception, spinning tales so convincing that even they start to believe their own lies. A habitual liar knows exactly what to say to tug at your heartstrings. They'll weave a story full of drama and urgency, and before you know it, you're caught in their web. You believe them, you invest your time, your energy, and your compassion only to discover later that the story wasn't entirely true, or worse, completely fabricated. Let me ask you this. How do you feel when you realize someone has lied to you after you've given them your help? Betrayed? Drained? Angry? The damage isn't just about the lie itself, it's about what it does to you. Every time you discover the truth behind a liar's manipulation, you lose a little bit of your trust in others. You start to question your own judgment. Was I too naive? Did I miss the signs? These doubts aren't accidental. Habitual liars thrive on creating confusion and uncertainty. They manipulate your empathy, using your kindness as a weapon against you. Here's the thing. Helping a habitual liar doesn't just waste your resources. It enables their behavior. When you fall for their stories, you're not just giving them what they want. You're teaching them that their lies work. And guess what? They'll do it again. Not just to you, but to the next person and the next. Lying becomes their strategy for survival. And every time you help, you reinforce that strategy. But here's the twist. Habitual liars aren't just hurting you, they're hurting themselves. Every lie they tell isolates them further, making it harder for people to trust them. And ultimately, harder for them to trust themselves. So how do you recognize a habitual liar before they drag you into their chaos? Consistency in drama. Their stories often sound too dramatic or exaggerated to be true. Changing details. Pay attention to inconsistencies in their narrative. One day it's one thing, the next it's something entirely different. No accountability. They never take responsibility for their actions. Instead, they blame others or uncontrollable circumstances. When you see these signs, it's time to step back. Protect yourself from the liar's web. Here's what you need to remember. You're not obligated to fix someone else's lies. Your energy is precious and wasting it on someone who manipulates and deceives only drains your power. When faced with a liar, you have two choices. 
Confront the truth. If the relationship matters to you, call them out respectfully. Let them know you see through their lies and won't tolerate manipulation. Walk away. If they refuse to change or continue their pattern, it's time to protect your peace by removing yourself from their influence. Your kindness is sacred. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. Your kindness is sacred. It's not a reward for dishonesty or manipulation. When you help someone who lies, you're not just hurting yourself. You're enabling their spiral. But when you stand firm, when you refuse to play their game, you force them to confront their own truth. Let go of the liars. Protect your peace. And remember, your honesty deserves honesty in return. Number five. The opportunist, they take, then disappear. Let's talk about the fifth type of person you shouldn't help, the opportunist. These people are smooth, charming, and convincing. They know how to make you feel like helping them is your opportunity, when in reality it's theirs to take advantage of you. The opportunist doesn't beg for your help. They sell you on it. They paint a grand picture of success one where you play an essential role. They tell you, if you just help me this one time, we'll both win big. But here's the hard truth. Once they've gotten what they want, they'll vanish. The opportunist knows how to appeal to your generosity. They'll charm you, making you believe you're part of something bigger than yourself. They'll say all the right things, make big promises, and convince you that their success is your success. But it's all smoke and mirrors. Once you've given your time, resources, or connections, they move on to the next target. And when you need their support in return, they're nowhere to be found. Have you ever felt like someone took advantage of your kindness and left you empty-handed? That's the opportunist's playbook. Why helping them hurts? Here's the problem with helping opportunists. It's a one-way street. You invest in them, but they don't invest in you. No reciprocity. They take what they need without offering anything in return. Broken trust. Their actions make you wary of helping others who might genuinely deserve it. Emotional drain. You're left questioning your judgment and regretting your generosity. Every time you help an opportunist, you lose a part of your time, energy, and trust that could have been given to someone who truly values your help. So how do you recognize an opportunist before it's too late? Big promises, no plan. They talk about dreams and goals, but offer no concrete steps to achieve them. Always asking, never giving. They frequently seek favors, but rarely, if ever, offer support in return. Quick to move on. Once they've taken what they need, they lose interest or disappear entirely. When you notice these patterns, it's time to pause and protect your boundaries. Let me tell you something. Saying no to an opportunist isn't selfish. It's smart. You don't owe anyone your resources, time, or trust, especially not someone who sees you as a stepping stone. By setting boundaries, you're not just protecting yourself. You're ensuring that your kindness goes to people who truly deserve it. Your kindness deserves respect. Ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with this. Your kindness deserves respect. Don't let the opportunist charm cloud your judgment. Save your energy for people who are genuine, reciprocal, and trustworthy. Protect your peace. Recognize the opportunist. And remember, your generosity is a gift, not a guarantee for others to exploit. For six, the drama seeker. Thriving on chaos, not solutions. Let's talk about the sixth type of person you should never help. The drama seeker. These people don't just live in chaos. They create it. And if you're not careful, they'll pull you right into their whirlwind. You know this type. They always seem to be in the middle of some crisis. Their life is a never-ending soap opera, and they're the star of the show. The thing is, they don't want the drama to end. 
because the chaos gives them attention, control, and purpose. But here's the kicker. They'll convince you that you're the only one who can fix their problems. Here's how it starts. They'll call you, text you, or show up at your door with a new disaster. At first, you feel sorry for them. You think, this person really needs my help. So you step in, you give advice, you offer solutions, you even go out of your way to help them fix the problem. And what happens? A week later, there's another crisis, then another. You start to realize this isn't about finding solutions. It's about feeding their need for attention. Drama seekers thrive on the emotional highs and lows of their chaotic lives. They don't want peace. They want the thrill of the storm, and they'll gladly pull you into it to keep the show going. Helping a drama seeker doesn't just waste your time. It drains your energy and peace of mind. Endless cycle. No matter how much you help, the drama never stops. Emotional exhaustion. Their constant crises wear you down, leaving you emotionally depleted. Lost focus. While you're busy solving their problems, you're neglecting your own growth and goals. Think about it. How much time have you lost getting dragged into someone else's chaos? Time you could have spent on your own dreams, your own success. So how do you recognize a drama seeker before you get pulled into their storm? Constant crisis. Their life is always in turmoil and there's always someone else to blame. No solutions. They reject advice or solutions because solving the problem would end the drama. Emotional manipulation. They make you feel guilty for not stepping in, saying things like, you're the only one I can count on. When you notice these signs, it's time to draw the line. How to break free. Here's the truth. You can't fix someone who doesn't want to be fixed. The best thing you can do is set boundaries. Detach emotionally. Recognize that their chaos is not your responsibility. Limit your involvement. Offer minimal help and don't let their drama consume your life. Focus on yourself. Redirect your energy toward people and projects that bring you joy and fulfillment. It's not your job to calm a storm that someone else keeps creating. Your energy deserves better. Ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with this. Protect your peace because no one else will do it for you. The drama seeker will always have a new crisis, but you don't have to be part of their story. Step back, set boundaries, and focus on building a life filled with purpose, not chaos. Your energy is too valuable to waste on drama. Use it to build something extraordinary instead. Seven, the manipulator. Turning your kindness into their weapon. Let's dive into the seventh and final type of person you should never help, the manipulator. These are the people who don't just want your help, they want control. They take your kindness, twist it, and use it to bind you into a cycle of guilt and obligation. Manipulators don't ask for help outright. They make you feel like you have no choice but to offer it. They'll say things like, you're the only one who understands me, or if you don't do this, I don't know what I'll do. Their goal? To make you feel responsible for their well-being. Before you realize it, you're no longer helping out of generosity, you're helping out of guilt. The manipulator's playbook. Here's how they operate. Guilt is a weapon. They twist every situation to make you feel like the bad guy for setting boundaries. Endless demands. The more you give, the more they expect and they'll never acknowledge your efforts as enough. Emotional blackmail. They play on your empathy making you feel like their happiness or success is entirely in your hands. Manipulators thrive on making you doubt yourself. They push just enough to keep you hooked, using your kindness against you to meet their needs. Helping a manipulator isn't just draining, it's destructive. Loss of control. You begin to feel like your time, energy, and resources are no longer your own. 
emotional burnout. Their constant demands leave you mentally and emotionally exhausted. Erosion of self-worth. Over time, their tactics can make you question your own value and boundaries. And the hardest part, manipulators don't change unless they're forced to face their behavior. So, how do you protect yourself? Set firm boundaries. Be clear about what you will and won't do and stick to it. Refuse to engage in guilt trips. Recognize their tactics for what they are and don't let them manipulate your emotions. Know when to walk away. If they continue to push, it's time to prioritize your peace over their demands. Saying no to a manipulator isn't selfish, it's survival. Your kindness is sacred. Ladies and gentlemen, let me leave you with this. Your kindness is sacred and it should never be twisted into a tool for someone else's control. Manipulators will always try to weaponize your generosity, but you hold the power to stop them. Stand your ground, protect your peace, and remember, true kindness uplifts. It doesn't bind you to guilt or obligation. Choose wisely. Your kindness is a gift, not a contract. Protect your kindness. Protect your peace. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a moment to reflect. We've covered seven types of people you should never help. The perpetual victim, the chronic complainer, the entitled person, the habitual liar, the opportunist, the drama seeker, and the manipulator. Each of these types shares one thing in common. They drain your energy, your time, and your peace without giving anything in return. And here's the truth. You're not obligated to help people who refuse to help themselves. Your kindness is a gift, not a duty. When you give it to the wrong people, you lose not just your time, but a part of yourself. But when you choose wisely, when you invest your energy in those who value and reciprocate your kindness, you create relationships that uplift and inspire. So here's my challenge to you. Look at the people in your life. Are they lifting you up? or are they dragging you down? Are they grateful for your help or are they taking it for granted? Say it with me. I will protect my peace. I will choose wisely. I will help those who value my kindness and I will walk away from those who don't. Your kindness is your power. Use it wisely.